Hello there guys, welcome again. Uh, this is, uh, I am uh, John Moss and uh, this is my um, leading lady, Nancy Matz. Um, it Hello is everybody. The, um, it is the um, 20th of May 2012 and um, we've just been talking about um, how negativity from other people can, can affect you. Um, uh, we were talking about an experience that I've had actually this very day about three hours ago um, concerning um, a friend of mine um, that, uh, to cut a long story short, she'd lost a child previously. And um, I'm not going to use the explicit language that was used, but it was words to the effect of, I'm glad that you lost your son, you bleep bleep, um, so and so, Very um, yeah. you know, and how how people's negativity can can and their ne their negative energy can transfer from one person to another, it's even through just words that are being written without you having to be face to face, um, you know, and how how do we deal with that? How do we deal with that negativity, and how can we, you know, sort of turn that into a positive, for want of a better word? Well, there's an example I want to use, a, put a couple examples for most people listening to this will know somebody who's been in a police force or a military. And if you're taught how to shoot and how to be aggressive, like movie stars in the, those uh, aggressive military or shoot em up or fast car, they get to where they get used to that kind of personality and they can carry it into the private life. I was married to a policeman and my first marriage, and I could see that his personality was changing. Well, if you take a child out of a home that's had a lot of abuse, that child will then carry it into their adulthood. Well, if you put a person into a situation where they're going to hear negative all the time, they get used to the language, they get used to it being normal for them. And then that kind of personality, who doesn't have reinforcements that you're a good person and life's okay, we all struggle but we all come out of it okay, they'll carry that into the personal and professional life. So as John and I were talking about this unfortunate lady who had this man come into a uh, chat room with her and said these terrible things, it's like I envisioned a cloud all around him of all this sewage. And he didn't want to hold on to the sewage because his life was so full of it. And so what I find people trying to do is they're clawing at the sewage and they're throwing it aside or to somebody yeah. else, hoping that they'll collect it. There's this big movie star in um, another country, and he's been on uh, national news about how he spews out all this negative all the time. And in his personal life, he has all this negative going on. It's the same principle that if you're full of negative surroundings and in situations, a good person coming into your sphere of energy will come in and collect a little bit. So my feeling was, and this is where I want John to take off, is that she became part of his visual and all this sewage that was around him He's so hateful, he threw it at her, and it's her choice to allow that sewage to come part of her energy. John? Yeah, what? yeah. Well, I mean, that's exactly what happened. I mean, you know, and, you know, I was chatting to her on Facebook, and then that, that takes you into the realm of, you know, we were sort of digesting it then and talking about it and talking about how, you know, well, this has been said. Now, how can we turn that into a positive rather mm -hmm. than accept mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the negative, you know, um, but I think it, uh, for me, I think it's just the way that that how people how people can try and sort of throw this at people without any concern, without any understanding, you know. Especially if it, it's if normal they, for them, it's normal. That's, that's, right, that's yeah. It's so normal for them to. It's like um, I'm trying to use examples so people can understand. Say you have a child that goes to kindergarten. And you, in your life, you don't have a potty mouth. But another child comes from a household where they use the F word and all the explanatives that we don't even want to mention on the tape. And they come to school and they hear that language at home as normal. So in kindergarten, you, your child comes home with a sweet, sweet little thing and all of a sudden they come out with words that you've never expressed yeah, yeah, in yeah. front of them. It's a bleeding over. What's normal for one person is not normal, normal for someone else. Yeah. So my feeling is this man was angry, uh, he he has his sewage in his mouth all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and someone who dares be happy like her, he can't understand that. He That's doesn't want good. that happiness. And of course, you wonder why is he in the chat room then? But he doesn't want someone else to express any unhappiness 
or try to explain a situation by telling them the, someone else of their life. So he says, no, my life is more um, sewage field, and I don't like that you're trying to be a nice person, so I'm going to throw my sewage at you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so where an innocent person sees that being thrown at them, they go, well, I haven't done anything to that person. Why don't they like me? I came up with an expression once. No one's going to like me either. No one's going to like you, John. Everybody that's, has somebody who won't like them. That's right. And I, and I said, you know, I'm not a bad person. I'm really, I wouldn't have gotten into this. I would have stayed with the telephone company in California and retired with a nice pension. I sacrifice and decide to give up. Basically, I'm a nice person. I'm trying to make a point, really, everybody. I'm trying to be a nice person. And by being a nice person, when someone hits me with negative or explanatives, I go, how can they dislike me? I'm a nice person. They don't know me. That's how I don't accept it. If you don't know me, how can you not like me or dislike me? So the choice to like me or dislike me has still not been decided. You don't know me enough to dislike me. That's how I get over it. Yeah. I don't have to accept it because you don't know me. So someone watching this may type in and say, well, Nancy, who, you know, well, and I don't own it because you don't know me. You don't know my real life. You don't know what I've sacrificed for 22 years to help those of you who do seek out the truth. So those of you who do like me will continue and set people my way. Those who don't, please don't call me. It doesn't matter. You're not going to get a good reading from me anyway because you don't like me. <laughs> so <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So stay away. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Oh, definitely. God. Definitely. I, definitely. I, I, all messed I just, up here. Yeah. I mean, I, I just find it... I just find it in, in, incredible that, that perhaps, I don't know, perhaps I'm somebody, perhaps I, I look through things a bit uh, a bit like rose-coloured glasses sometimes. And I think because, <laughs> do. do you know we what I mean? Be wonderful. <laughs> That's it, you know. And, I, you know, I was just sort of, it really, really shocked me, though, that somebody would, would I mean, language to me, I mean, as you know, Nancy, I mean, I've been at the front line. I've been a bus driver. You know, I've been, you know, spat out. I've had cans of beer thrown over me. I, I, you know, so, I mean, words to me, you know, people can call me anything they like. Really. You bet that's, you're not innocent anymore. That's it. So you're not innocent to the potty words or the, the sewage, I call it. Um, maybe your friend who means well and helps people a lot doesn't have sewage in her life. So when it's thrown at her, she doesn't know how to respond. That's right. I'm trying to think how many years back it was. It's like 15 years. It's been a long time. I can't even remember. It was, it was the first book, I guess. And I was at Barnes & Noble doing a book signing, and some guy just came and, and, and took me off kilter because he wanted a platform for his sewage. And I said, this is my platform. Go somewhere else. And don't come around me and never bother me again. And I found, and this is a point, everybody, my voice has power. It's not just words. It's energy. So if someone has sewage all around them and they want you to share it, you put your positive thing, this is my form and a place where I want good and, and good things for people to hear. You're spewing out uh, sunshine and you're trying to put sunshine yeah, into yeah, yeah. sewage. Who, who wins? What's heavier? Well, sewage is heavier. So you don't have to accept it by saying, that person doesn't know me. How can they say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have to accept it. Absolutely. I work for the right side, the light. That person doesn't. Who's going to win in the light of, in the eyes of God? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. So that's, that's how you have to yeah, accept it. That's right. That's right. Uh, I, told, I told John just a minute ago, I says, you know, I'm making so many karma points and brownie buttons that, you know, if I fall down and skim my nose, I'm going to be picked up by somebody because of my points. <laughs> you know, we've, we take a lot of abuse and we try so hard to help people. I, I have people call me up all the time and go, I want to be a psychic reader. Teach me. Mentor me. Do this for me. Do that. I want to be you. And I go, really? You want to do this? Oh, no. <laughs> To be me? You want to do I this? Have no idea how hard this is, everybody. Yeah. To be right on all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, me oh, my stage. gosh. Yes. You know, so someone who doesn't like me try to touch base with me. And when you get into this, you better be ready for a tough show, chin. Definitely. Because it's not always easy. People don't want to hear what you have to say. So maybe this guy is so emotionally distraught. And so I'm getting off again with him again. I don't really want to give him the power, the energy. I don't want to give him time. We should care only for the one who's receiving this because only the divine can heal souls of so many who are so distraught. And the thing is that I'm going to a place, and John, you and I talked about this. What am I doing for the last 20 years of my life? Well, write books so we become emotionally healthy. This young man, and I have a vision of him, it's not even going to be worth my effort 
I'm not even going to spend the time to tell you who he is or what his what he looks like because he hasn't earned it. No. But when he passes, if he hasn't fixed what's wrong with him, he'll go into spirit and become insane. And those people we call the demons. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. then you're yeah. going to have exorcist because he'll be saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then someone will say, oh, this guy feels so terrible. He must be a demon. And then he'll be thrown even further into the depths of darkness. So on some level, she should be uh, your little friend and you need to get back to yeah. her. That she has so much light around her that nothing can penetrate it unless she wishes it so. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, it, uh, yeah, because, I mean, she's left me a, um, a message on Facebook saying, can I do her a few cards and stuff like that, which I will. I am going to do. But um, like you said, Nancy, you know, it's um, it's such you, you you hit on a point there when, you know, because I, I myself believe that the voice has power as well. And, and I, I the more energy and the more you speak of something yeah. the the more it can become you know and i'm a firm believer in you know when when something like this this happens the best thing to do is just not give it the energy that it's worth because the yeah. more the, the more you validate you give it, him. yeah that's it the more you the more you, you the more you like i know we're talking about it now but we're trying to give examples of, of you know but the more the more that my friend thinks and talks about it and the more sh the bigger it will be the bigger it becomes just and then it turns into a fester and then it turns into something bigger and uh, well it's wounding it, her that, that's and right the, say. that's and right the sliver on her soul yeah, that's right. it needs to be pulled out because that sliver can fester and what she needs to go and again everybody i'll say the same thing how can i accept what you said bad about me when maybe you don't know me to say that at all. And that's the, that's the key to her healness, yes. healthness and healing. And also that she has sacrificed everything to do this to help people on their journey. Then she has a good soul. So why would someone want to tarnish her soul? No. Does he work for darkness? Does he believe in darkness? Is he a manifester of negative to have people shine on him only? We don't know his game. But by her creating and envisioning his words she's actually given him more energy that's more right. power that's right so she that's needs right. to stop thinking about that's it right. that's right absolutely that's right and and i think that can be that's where the toughest part comes in i think yeah you know i mean like you were saying earlier on when people say to me you know i've had people say to me oh you know can you learn me to be psychic can we can we learn to be you know? and i say to them well you know you're in for a tough ride you know if you, <laughs> yeah, you really want to do this everybody <laughs> you know do you really want to stand up and say yes that's me because you know, you, you uh, sometimes you face the jaws of the devil himself. I think sometimes you know. What expression? That's great. Uh, you know, and um, it, it's it's tough. It's tough. It's tough being. Uh, I think it's tough being whatever you want to call us. Whether you want to call us a sensitive, a psychic, a medium, a clairvoyant, whatever you want to call us. I think it's tough because I think, as a psychic, you tune into people's thoughts, feelings, emotions without you really. They don't have to say anything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And but like you said, Nancy, words have power. So if the, if it is somebody that's negative, or that has negative thoughts, and then they put power behind them words, mm -hmm. as a sensitive person, you feel it twice, three times as strong. Because yeah. not only are you feeling the emotion from the person, but you're feeling the energy that they're also giving it by giving the you know, it's like having a bow and arrow in front yes, of their mouth and they let right. it go and, and you right. stand there and you're wounded that's and it right. penetrates your soul. That's right. Um, that's right. I don't want your friend to hurt anymore. I hope she'll have a chance to watch this video. And for those of you who are wounded by family, sometimes it's not always easy to get away from someone who's related to you as it is a stranger. Sometimes you can say to the stranger, they're so wounded, I don't want to try to help them. And it's their stuff, they don't know me. But when it's family, you have to forgive them for being wounded first. Yes. You don't have to forgive a stranger because you don't know their story. But if it's family, you have to say, I'm sorry that you're so wounded. Whatever you're about, I know it's family, I can't stay away. So kind of like we may have to talk about family. Some Somebody who maybe watched this video might have thought of family. Well, I can't get away from my family, they're always spewing sewage at me and maybe sometimes you have to say to that person why are you directing it to me I haven't done anything to you I'm an innocent sometimes people have to react by hearing the truth a stranger in a chat room it's impossible um, like I was that lecture that one time 
been so grateful for some wood here. But when it's family spewing at you, yeah, it's more difficult. But forgiving them is the true is the first step. And that softens your life force, so you don't have to accept any more of the garbage. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, guys, um, I think that'll that that's going to cause uh, we'll call, we'll bring that to a close. Put my teeth in, yeah, because um, <laughs> we've been fifteen minutes. So, um, thank you very much for listening, people, and please uh, we thank you for listening to us. Um, and just to repeat, I'm John. Um, if you want to know more about me, my website is www.orbsuk.co.uk, and and for Nancy, it's www.nancymaps.com. Com, dot net is that right Nancy? Either, I have two of them dot com and dot net and they kind of come together at the same place so it's oh. Nancy Matz M-A-T-Z dot net thank you very much okay so thank you guys for tuning in and speak to you again soon bye for now bye for now bye for now thank you for coming and talk to you later bye bye basement and my first marriage, and I could see that his personality was changing. Well, if you take a child out of a home that's had a lot of abuse, that child will then carry it into their adulthood. Well, if you put a person into a situation where they're going to hear negative all the time, they get used to the language, they get used to it being normal for them. And then that kind of personality, who doesn't have reinforcements that you're a good person and life's okay, we all struggle, but we all come out of it. Turn that into a positive, for want of a better word. Well, there's an example I want to use, a, put a couple examples for most people listening to this will know somebody who's been in a police force or a military. And if you're taught how to shoot and how to be aggressive, like movie stars in the, those uh, aggressive military or shoot 'em up or fast car, they get to where they get used to that kind of personality and they can carry it into the private life. I was married to a police. Hello there, guys. Welcome again. Uh, this is uh, I am uh, John Moss, and uh, this is my um, leading lady, Nancy Matz. Um, it Hello, is everybody. The, um, it is the twentieth um, of May, two thousand and twelve, um, and we've just been talking about um, how negativity from other people can can affect you. Um, uh, we were talking about an experience that I've had actually this very day about three hours ago um, concerning um, a friend of mine um, that, uh, to cut a long story short, she'd lost a child previously. And um, I'm not going to use the explicit language that was used, but it was words to the effect of, I'm glad that you lost your son, you bleep bleep, um, so and so, Very um, yeah. you know. And how how people's negativity can can and their ne their negative energy can transfer from one person to another, it's even through just words that are being written without you having to be face to face, um, you know. And how how do we deal with that? How do we deal with that negativity? And how can we, you know, sort of?